After an eventful week off, Ohio State will look to carry the momentum of that dominating victory at Rutgers back at Ohio Stadium. Mark has more in tonight's Buckeye Beat. Ohio State is back at home Saturday night for an 8 p.m. kickoff against Minnesota. A Gophers team that racked up over 460 yards of offense against Michigan's strong defense a week ago. That performance coming just days after Minnesota head coach Jerry Kill stepped down for health reasons. Um, even when he was recruiting me, he was a great guy. You know, I mean, I felt a great personality from him. So, you know, they're motivated. Um, so they're going to come out. I mean, you saw that last week. Um, offense, you know, they, have, they run their tight ends very well and they have a running quarterback. So um, it'll be an interesting game. They, they did a lot of things really well in that game. Um, you know, we saw their quarterback make some plays and we saw some of their tight ends make some plays and their running backs run really hard. So we're going to have to find ways to defend all that. You got to be ready to just uh, close the pocket and uh, you know, try to keep them contained more, more than anything because the guy that can run is just going to try to find a way out. And if you close that pocket, it makes it a lot harder for him to get out. So uh, we focused on that a little bit this week, and we'll see Saturday. Uh, I think, and, and they have a tendency, that uh, last week against our rivals, they played almost all zero hole, which means they're daring you to take the shots, and we're going to stop the run at all costs. And they put those guys out there in islands, and they're very good players. So I would anticipate with Zeke, that we would see some of that and it depends if we hurt them, if they'll stay in it or not. But that, I think that's going to come down. That's going to be a big part of this game. Matter of fact, I know it is. Uh, they were a great team last year too and, and when they played us tough. So yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be yeah, like get two good corners. We play a lot of man coverage, yeah. load the box up a little bit. So we got a game plan for that. Meyer doesn't think JT Barrett's suspension will be a distraction for his team. This team's been through so much that uh, it's time to just go, and, and there's so much, you know, we, we try to really focus on, you've heard it a million times around our power of the unit, and the corner's job is to play really good as a group and grade out champions. And if uh, Braxton's taking the snaps, don't, I'm not sure. I think they're aware of it because it was such a news story, but they're, everybody's just so focused on getting their jobs done that uh, I haven't felt it at all. Not all bad news for Ohio State this week as they prepare for Minnesota. Three Buckeyes named to the semifinalists for national awards as linebacker Raekwon McMillan, a semifinalist for the Buckus, goes to the nation's top linebacker. Joey Bosa, a semifinalist for the Bednarik Award, goes to the top defensive player. And Ezekiel Elliott named a semifinalist for the Maxwell Award for the nation's top college football player. Mike Miller from WIMA 1150, our Buckeye insider, joins us now and, you know, a lot of things have been said this past seven days about Ohio State. A lot of things have been said these past seven, nine weeks about Ohio State. <laughs> yeah. And I think people tend to forget they are still undefeated. They are the top-ranked team in the country in terms of the two major polls. Mm -hmm. And even though they're not beating teams by 60 points, they're still looking pretty good each and every week out there. Right, and they really are the consensus best team as the defending champion by most of the experts from various uh, standpoints and viewpoints uh, that I've seen. Sure, there's issues with Ohio State. They're in a bigger glare than ever before because of their current uh, status, but there is so much talent around the lot. And through the eight games, a lot of that talent has been able to perform at a rather impressive de degree. You mentioned Joshua Perry, Raekwon McMillan, Ezekiel Elliott, amongst others. Ohio State hosting Minnesota a year ago up in St. Paul. Actually, I guess it was in Minneapolis. We were across the river from St. Paul. They had that, that blizzard during the game, and Ohio State pulled out a somewhat narrow victory, although it really wasn't that uh, narrow if you actually watched it and paid attention to it. But the point being, this Gophers team is not the same team they were a year ago. You've got an offense without Big Ten running back David Cobbs and without mm -hmm. tight end Max Williams and all of a sudden this offense isn't quite as prolific as it was a season ago. No, they don't really have that go-to guy like the running back last year and the outstanding tight end old Super Max uh, Williams, but having said that, they do have a veteran quarterback, Mitch Leidner, and anytime you have a quarterback who can run to some degree and can throw to some degree, he's not a supreme athlete, but he provides that stability that can make you effective at times, and I think that would be the best way to describe the Gophers. They've been effective at times. Four and four, they don't have any bad losses, don't necessarily have any good wins either. They could have had a good win a week ago against Michigan, but they couldn't quite pull it out as the Wolverines yeah. stopped them at the goal line as time ran out. It's going to be interesting to see how this Minnesota team reacts after an emotional week last week with Jerry Kill resigning. 
and just losing the Little Brown Jug game like that, what they have left in the tank is going to be the question for interim head coach Tracy Clays and company. I think that's a good question, quite frankly, because I, I watched a large portions of the Little Brown Jug game and Minnesota played with reckless abandon and just constant emotion that I think was had to be exhausting to some degree. Also interesting to note is that none of the current Gophers has ever set foot in Ohio Stadium, and that can be a little bit overwhelming. The question is who and how many of the Gophers step up and perform under the lights at Ohio Stadium, or how many decide not to. And this Minnesota defense is going to face an Ohio State offense that was clicking on all cylinders, yeah. except now you have to go back to the Cardell Jones, JT Barrett situation. Cardell will be the starting quarterback. Personally, I think we're going to see quite a bit of Braxton Miller at quarterback in the red zone. And I think we're going to finally see Braxton Miller throw a pass downfield because if he's in the red zone, at the most he's got to throw the ball is 30 yards, so there's still a little mm -hmm. bit of a comfort level without him trying to stretch out the surgically repaired shoulder. Ohio State's offense against this Minnesota defense, is it going to come down to, like it does every week, stopping Ezekiel Elliott? I think it probably will. In Minnesota, though, they'll overplay the run. They'll do their best to stop the run. I still think, again, it comes back to Cardale's decision-making. When to pull it out, when to hand it off and let Ezekiel run, and when should Cardale run in a design situation and not get caught indecisive where he's forced to scramble and look bad. To me, that was the big hurdle with the Cardale Jones era inside of this 2015 season. Hopefully, the Buckeyes will have made some progress past that. We'll find out Saturday night. Well, I think much like how JT Barrett was labeled as having a weak arm because his arm is not as good as Cardale Jones, right. I think right. Cardale Jones has been labeled a poor runner because he's not as good of a runner as Braxton Miller or JT Barrett. I, I think Cardale can still run the ball. It's just yep. it's, he's not as good as the other quarterbacks Ohio State has used the last couple of years. Yep. I, th I think Cardale will be just fine in a scrambling mode. Of course, mm -hmm. we'll have much more on the game coming up Sunday morning on at WOSN, the full half-hour Buckeye Insider. For now, let's send it back to Andy.